Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a guitar hyper pop type beat just like this. First we need guitar. I actually played all the guitar on this specific beat, but no worries if you don't play. I actually have a free guitar pack in the link below with loops just like this. I like to start with just a core guitar riff. I wanted a really clean sound for this, so I decided to go with Archetypes Nolly, which is a super fire amp simulation plugin. Other things I like to use are Waves GTR or Guitar Rig 6. Also, I like painting these left and right because then I can keep my octaves or other sort of ambient parts in the middle, and it creates a really nice full stereo image. One thing I love to do is shape the tone with all my guitars, and I like to do this with either a combination of distortion, saturation, or EQ. Cut out a little bit of lows, a little bit of highs, but then we got this Saturn, which is on the faster master or a preset. pretty subtle but to my ears it's just kind of bringing it to life and adding a little nice sparkle to it next we got a little counter melody type part and that's just once again actually the exact same preset this clean chords by nolly and this is what the part's doing And for shaping the tone here, we actually are just using RC20, Lush and Crunch guitar preset. I think I cranked the distortion up a little bit, maybe the tone as well. I'm doing this to really help it blend in with the other guitar part, but also have its own unique space. The important part about the guitars in these beats is that it really needs to build. So these next guitar parts really help with that. Got this little acoustic that I just recorded on my iPhone. And then we got some like kind of almost pop punky type palm muted guitars. I really wanted these to be focused in the mid range right here. And so I used Saturn and EQ to help me do that. A Little bit of Valhalla, just mix it 9%, just to give it a little air. I think these are also just literally the same, yep, same Nolly preset. Now that was sounding really good, but I wanted it to have more ambience. And so I played this little guitar part right here. I'm gonna mute all the effects and just play it with this guitar rig six. Now that was cool, but I thought it sounded a little cheap. And so I kind of just started building a little effects rack to make it sound more expensive. You just got a little EQ. This is where a lot of the kind of magic is happening. Using this devil lock, then micro shift, just giving it a little width, and then pan man, just kind of giving it a little bit of movement and just make it more exciting and interesting. Another Pro Q3. And then we just got a little automation, which is just taking away the high end and kind of slowly bringing it in. And then just portal. I just wanted it to be a little more interesting and have more texture. Next, we got this live bass. The setting is pick the crust on Guitar Rig 6. Now, a lot of times I see people just take a loop and then kind of just manipulate it for the hook. And I actually do that all the time and love doing that. But for this, I wanted the guitar chords and everything to be different for the hook. This is what I went with. That's broken into two different layers, both panned left and right. The first, we got these kind of crunchy emo type chords, clean chord preset, obviously. But what's making it crunchy is this Saturn plugin. Now, the processing on this is really important. We got a little EQ, clean out the muddy frequencies, and then we got Saturn, which is on this magic setting. Once again, giving it a little bit more sparkle. Now, I wanted to take that theme from the verse, and really amp up the tone of it. So I just duplicated that part. Kind of sounds bad on its own, but I think it sounds cool in the mix. Now on the second half of my hooks, a lot of times I like to bring in octaves, just kind of elevate the energy a little bit. To get that, I just used this basic Chicago, good old Saturn with the Fox amp, little EQ, kind of taming some of the harsh frequencies. Now I'm using this S1 just to control where they sit in the mix. I like to think of my bass and drums in the middle, and then my kind of main guitar is super wide, and then this somewhere in the middle in terms of width. Then we just got the bass again. Little R bass to kind of increase like the sub frequencies and a little EQ just shaving off some of the high end. Next we got the drums. One rhythm that's really popular for these kind of beats is a Jersey club type vibe just like this. A lot of times I'll use this rhythm for the build up right before the hook. And then for the hook, we just got this kind of snare going on. 
super simple. But then in the second half, we bring in all the drums. One thing I like to do on drums a lot is to blend in effects in parallel. And to do that, I use this Devil Lock plugin and really turn down the mix. Kind of gives it this grungier type feeling. On the second verse, I wanted to blend in some live sounding type drums. So I use this Big Picture Drum Loop, which is a part of my free drum kit that you can go get in the link below. Another cool thing to do is to change the rhythm in the second hook compared to the first hook. The next thing I wanna talk about is probably the most important, and these are the little detail type sounds. These are what separate the amateur producers or even good producers from great producers. These are some examples of the kind of things I'm talking about. All of these little things are meant to help the beat really breathe and come alive. Every eight bars, having something that kind of helps just it move along, whether it be a riser, a tonal ambient type sound, or a fill. Also with these hyper pop kind of guitars, a lot of times I like to manipulate them or pitch them. And that's exactly what I did on the second hook. And so a lot of times I'll layer like an octave up or an octave down just to give it more depth. Added a little OTT just to kind of crunch it up a little bit and then EQ'd out all the high and low frequencies just to keep it really focused in the mid range. And then I just chopped a part of the guitar, pitched it up 12, added a few effects. I got thermal on rich aggression and then the effect rack on micro shift just kind of widening it out. For this halftime section, a really important thing is the bass. As far as the actual sound goes, super simple serum patch. The important thing is just the saw wave, the noise, distortion, little OTT. And then the movement, we got this little pitch bin thing going at the end. Now, sometimes I'll be a lot more aggressive with this, but I wanted to keep everything pretty simple just so the vocal could really shine on this beat. Another important thing just to keep your mix really tight is side chain. So all I did was just copy the kick pattern with the MIDI and trigger all of the instruments with the shaper box kind of plug in and it's just set to one fourth. So it really helps punch through the mix and kind of just gives it this nice little movement that I thought was cool. Another important thing to this sound is the master. Now it's different every time, but I find that a lot of times saturating and clipping on the master is really cool. And even adding a little OTT just to kind of tighten everything up. Here's what it sounds like without the master chain. And here's with. When you get all these elements together, here's a little preview of what you can do. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's anything I can improve on or if you have any other video ideas that you think I should do, make sure to let me know below. Other than that, I'll catch y'all next time.